Welcome to Dust Geek. Okay, so we've got a really cool test here. Now, the card that I've been using up to this point is an NVIDIA 1080 Founders Edition. This was released back in May of 2016. I don't remember exactly when I got mine, but it was pretty close as soon as it was released out there. Uh, I picked up a 1080 and I've been running it and loving it just fine. But I recently did a Ryzen 7 2700X CPU swap from the i7-6700K. Absolutely love the Ryzen 7 2700X. Incredible, incredible performance. But I wanted to go full AMD. I hadn't played with AMD a while. And I know that everybody has done reports to say, basically, you're going to get a better gaming performance. Gaming being the key word out of the 1070, 1080 NVIDIA cards than you're going to get out of the AMD cards. Now, it's not really fair to put a Vega 56 up against a 1080. That would be more of the Vega 64 line. However, the only one I could get my hands on because the Bitcoin miners have been pretty good at swapping up or grabbing up all the cards in the stores. And I've been wanting one of these for a long time. And the first one I saw on the shelf was a 56, so I grabbed it. And so those are the ones that I have to compare against. But I think it's a little more fair comparison considering that the Vega line of cards launched on August of 2017. So nearly a year later. So the performance overall being that it came out a year later and all of the different things about a year later and all the different things that have kind of come up with this card is that it should have been way faster than the NVIDIA's. And what we're doing here is showing, well, it can keep up with the 1080, at least the 56, a year later. And I guess that's not bad, depending on what the price you get these for. So here's the frames per second. This is running on my NVIDIA build, and we are doing ballistic overkill. Now, the frames per second on a waiting screen is, you know, it looks fantastic, but doesn't mean much at all. So what we're going to do, of course, is skip in here in these frames to show you the part where we actually start playing the game. And what I do is I just create my own server here and log in. That way I'm not dropping out of people's games in the middle of matches. And what you're going to see in the frame per second is that it's going to be really great and it's going to drop in some points as expected. And when you start shooting, it kind of goes down uh, even further. Uh, and this is pretty much what you get in any of these FPS tests. This isn't scientific by any stretch of the imagination. So now we're we're in the game, and at the very beginning, we're jumping around 200 frames per second, 170, but we're not shooting yet. This is just us running around, and you can see some drops and some gains here, but right now we're averaging around probably 180, but then you see some of these drops that happen that go real low, like 148. When we start shooting things start dropping pretty significantly down into the 150s. Of course, when I say significantly, this is incredible performance, right? Out of a video card uh, console, people are drooling right now. You're trying to get 60 frames per second. We're talking over 100 here. So you can see it's pumping the lead everywhere. And if you were to average this out, you would probably say, you know, because there's some drops there, 128, 140s, 150. So somewhere between... 140 and 150 would probably be your average uh, around here. So that's kind of the performance that we are getting out of the NVIDIA 1080. So now what I'm going to do is stop this. Now I have just used the AMD GPU graphics. So just there's no drivers to install, just what's in the kernel itself. And we're going to play Ballistic Overkill again here. And hopefully, yep, launched on the right screen. Yahoo. And again, we're getting our fantastic frames per second at sitting screens, but let's get into the game. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to go to community server. We're going to create our own. We're going to use this super advanced password that nobody could guess. Oh, darn it. I'm recording this. And we're going to get into the game and see what kind of frames we get just going around and shooting and see how these cards kind of compare with Ballistic Overkill. Again, you'd want to test several different games I have. CSGO uh, is more heavily CPU based, so but ultimately they're pretty close to each other. Now that we start shooting, again we start dropping into those 140s. We also have moments of 160, 134, 154, 139. So not quite as good as the 1080, but again, we're just you just install and go 
in this case using the AMD drivers after uninstalling all the NVIDIA stuff. We get some moments of 178 depending on where we're going. I would say this one averages somewhere around the 135, 135, 140 frames per second on average. So maybe 10 frames per second less than the NVIDIA. Now I did try to see about installing the AMD Pro drivers, but for OpenSUSE I was running into all kinds of issues getting them installed because it basically says it's an incompatible OS, Red Hat OS or something like that when you try to install them and follow the instructions on AMD site or the OpenSUSE forums. So I'm not quite sure what's happening there, but my understanding is the AMD GPU Pro drivers do not get you much of a gain in gaming anyways, so I'd expect this is about what we're getting in frame. So, pretty awesome performance overall in comparison. Now, for the price, if you had a choice and gaming is important to you, the 1080 is definitely a better value because they, based on eBay right now, if you pick one up used, they're running about the same price, the 1080 and the Vega 56. Now, a Vega 64 would have been a more fair comparison and it would be interesting to see how many more frames per second we would get out of a Vega 64. My guess is that it would probably make up for that 10 frames per second at least and you would be running on par with the 1080. But we forget there's a 1080 Ti out there which probably, not probably, definitely does uh, going to have a lot better performance and that one came out more recently so we'll have to see what AMD does. But overall if you could pick one of these up for a really good price, the Vega 56, you're not going to have any trouble playing any games. You're going to have a lot of fun with this card. Certainly at this uh, over 100 frames per second easily is a fantastic uh, experience as a gamer. And you're not going to be getting uh, fragged uh, easily because of not having the proper frame rate and somebody being able to do stuff more quickly than you. So because this is my 56, we probably want to play another game on here just for fun. So let's do some Rocket League action and just see what kind of frames we're getting in Rocket League. And again, I won't go online, so I'm not dropping out of people's games in the middle. We'll just go do kind of like a little test run or game here. Overall, the Vega 56 is really interesting. From a Linux perspective, it's interesting to be able to get into install a card and just start using it without having to go through all the pains of setting up drivers. And I think that is a pretty interesting experience. Um, we're running the KDE desktop here. Let's do some training. We'll do free play and just drive around here like a moron. And you could check out the frames per second. One frame per second, fantastic. Exactly what I was going for. No. 180 frames, 160 frames. Looks absolutely beautiful. So we could see some drops in here on the frame rates. Down to 128, 138. Now, if we go to our settings, this is important here. I believe we are running on the highest options available. High quality, high quality. Everything is sitting there. Check for weather effects and everything else. Render quality is high quality. Render detail, max FPS, anti-aliasing, anti-aliasing, aliasing, whatever it is. Anyways, anti-aliasing. Is that it? You guys will tell me in the comments. But you can see here, you know, the game's playing beautifully. You're not going to be having any problems playing with your friends on the Vega 56. Additionally, my understanding is for things like rendering and other um, tasks that are more outside of gaming, the Vega 56 really starts to shine uh, over its competitors. So if you're in a professional element, video rendering, game design, that type of thing, you're going to have a really, really good time with this card, even more so, as I hear, over things like the NVIDIA 1080s. But if you are a pure gamer, I think it's clear the NVIDIA is going to win out uh, 1080 a little bit. But this isn't a bad card. It, it definitely, if it was actually the retail prices were out there and not this ridiculous Bitcoin mine pricing, uh, we you would be pretty happy getting this card uh, into your machine. So, but I'm guessing that some folks who maybe have like the RX 580s and some of these other cards are getting similar performance out of their card that I'm getting here out of this one. None of these cards were overclocked, by the way. 
So there's some tweaking and things that could probably be done. Even here, you can take the Vega 64 um, firmware and put it onto the 56, which a lot of people do for their Bitcoin mining, but apparently others have done for gaming as well, and it can handle that. So maybe overclocking this some would get us some better performance here, which a lot of people do with the AMD products is uh, overclock them, get some additional performance out of them. And we would even see better frames per second here. But this is stock. Everything stock on a Ryzen 7 2700X with 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. It's a beastly machine. I don't know which one I'm going to keep. Do I get rid of the 1080, let it find a new home, or enjoy being able to install any Linux distribution without having to mess with drivers? That's kind of a big bonus there. So in any case, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you disappointed? Are you happy? Do you want one? And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to watch the video.